All right, so <clears throat> we're working with these foam balls. Now, these, these can only be in the United States. If you're in the United States, you're a coach, and you want to acquire some of these foam balls, is a Bill Patton. You have to get in touch with Bill Patton, so just go on Facebook. Anyway, <clears throat> as we work with the foam balls, this is the 190, 190 millimeter, and the objective it's it's light okay allison come on up here you can feel how light this is right mm -hmm. but it's 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 very dense it's made dense right so it's it's you, you can't really squeeze it right so the point of this is to is to get you hitting the ball hitting to the ball and then through the ball all right so obviously the 190 is pretty big with relationship to your racket, so you're going to have to hit it square in the in the sweet spot, okay? Because you're going to really it's not going anywhere if you hit it here. So it works on contact point, the cleanness of the strike, and <clears throat> you're going to want to hit both sides two-handed, right? So you know your forehand, left hand on top, and then hit through the ball with both hands. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help you engage your core with the contact point, right? So you're going to line your hand, your hand and like your core, your belly button is going to contact the ball at the same time. So you want to get your core and your hand synchronizing or lining up with the shot, right? Because a lot of times if you, if, you, if you rotate your core first and your hand is behind you, now there's a disconnection between your core muscles and your hand and your arm, right? So then it becomes more about the arm at that point because you're disconnected, right? Or the hand goes too fast and the core is behind the hand and now that's also disconnected, right? So that also can be too much, it's too much arm now trying to generate power, right? So when the pros make that sound, when this, that sound they make when they strike the ball, that cracking sound, like a cracking of a whip or a gunshot, it's because they have synchronized their core muscles with their hand and the point of contact. Okay? And that's why, and they're hitting it solid, and that's what makes that sound, and that's why they're able to strike the ball so hard and not use a lot of, their arms aren't wearing out. Right? So when you start to get arm pain, it's because you're, you're disconnected from your core. Okay, so you're like that, and then it's coming, or you're like this, and there's a lot of arm, and the core, and the core stays back, right? So this is going to really train you, because you've got to experience what that feels like, and I can only try to describe it to you, but, but the, these foam balls are going to really help you understand how to hit to the ball, and then through the ball, okay? So this is really funny when the first time, because you've never done this, so it's really funny the first time you try to hit a forehand. So my prediction is it's just gonna die in the bottom of the net or not even make it to the net. Okay, that's my prediction. Start off in the middle of the service box, and we won't, no, middle of the service box. We won't rally this very long, you know, 60 seconds, and then we'll move on to the 150 ball, which is a little bit smaller. Okay, you ready? So both hands on the racket, and you're just trying to hit it clean in the middle of your strings. You ready? Oh, okay, good. So you see how you swung up on the ball? Swing through the ball, so to and through. You can start it. Go ahead. Ah, yeah, it's heavy. Very heavy, heavier than you thought. There you go. Ah, see, so what do you realize right away 
okay? That you're, you, you've got to do, once you hit to the ball, where does the racket need to go at that point? Can it go up or does it, know it need to go through? Okay, tell, tell everyone. It definitely has to go through. <laughs> okay, good. All right, All right so, so do, do it again. again. Ready? <clears throat> there you go. There you go. Backhand. Oh, yeah. There you go. Ah, okay, catch it. No, no, no one handed. Okay, now. <clears throat> Here you go. The reason why you don't want, when you get these balls, okay, this is for everyone watching too. If you're watching this and you, and you get one of these balls, you do not want to use one hand, okay? And here's one of the reasons that I found by using them. First of all, Bill and Martin Broke, who's the main guy behind this, you can hurt yourself, okay? Because you've got to hit this clean in the middle and that's when you don't feel the tension. But if you miss hit this, it can really mess your arm up. That's why the stability with both hands, because you want to learn to rotate the core with the hands, okay? All right, ready? Here we go. So both hands on it. Back, back, back in first. You can see like we didn't we didn't spend a lot of time with this ball and you don't want to, you know, about 60 seconds total hitting time. Cuz what did you start to feel when you hit it clean? Like your contact point was solid. What did you feel, Allison? Was it easier? Did you feel your core engaged? Okay, good. All right. Now we're going to go from the 190 to the 150. All right, so you can see the difference in the two, right? So this is the 190, this is the 150, considerably smaller. Mm -hmm. All right, now fill that one, All right? A little bit more spongy on the outside, but then try to squeeze through it. And then you get to the core, right? So it's still, that's what makes these special is they're just dense, okay, in their core. And that provides that feeling of, you know, you just can't brush up on these, right? If you bought any foam balls, you know, it may be somewhere else. Um, that doesn't have a, a dense core, you're going to be able to just spin that ball. And that's not, that's not what we're going for. We're going for two and through. Okay. All right. So we're going to go this same thing, both hands on the racket with this one as well, because again, this is still a little large. Come, come to you. Let me see your racket. You see how, how much, see the size difference there, there. So it's still quite large. So you still want to hit it, try to strike it right in the middle, but you're going to feel this is a little bit easier to, to strike, okay? Okay, ready? That's it. Hear that thud. There you go. Backhand. You hit through that backhand. Ready? Go to the middle of the court. Go back to the middle. There you go. Go, 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 go. There you go, good. You can't hit it out of the air. Okay, come on. <laughs> the clay came off and just riddled me. Okay, so did you hear the sound from the 190, but especially with this one, could you hear like the thud? Okay, that means that you're hitting it solid. Okay. 
what do you notice is the biggest difference between the 150 and the 190? Come, come closer. See, Martin Baroque or Martin Baroque Tennis Academy International, right? So Martin is the main, he's the design, the expert behind this, right? So, uh, but he's in maybe Switzerland or Sweden. He's somewhere, okay. <laughs> What was the main difference between? It was a little bit lighter, therefore it's easier to hit. It's easier to strike and play. So, so as you go down in size, okay, you start to feel. But you feel how the core yes. is still engaged in the process. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the 120. Now we go from the 150 to the 120. Okay, and I believe they have a 90. I've got to get some 90s, but. The 120. So you can see the difference here. Now we're going down. Now fill this one. All right. It's it's squishier, okay, but it still has that core inside. Okay. So now you can play the 120 with one hand. Okay. All right. So, but you're gonna feel start connecting your core with your hand. Okay. And I always like to say you can make your hand. You want to make your hand go fast, but not the arm. Okay. Because there's a big difference in trying to make your arm go fast and make your hand go fast. Okay, if you try to make your arm go fast, you can start to get into issues, right? You can have elbow issues, and then doing that, right? So you want the hand to go fast, but the hand lines up with the core, so it's there. Okay, all right. So let's let's hit the 120. Now we can be behind the service line here. All right, ready? So you're looking for that feel and the sound of the ball. through it okay so make I want you to try to finish more around the shoulder okay yep finish more around the shoulder there you go again go there you go again go right again what did you notice when you started to com make your finish bigger here, more complete, instead of just like leaving it out here? What did you notice about the speed of the ball? It was faster. Yeah, it increased, right? I heard that nice little pop too. You heard the popping sound. So this one has, you can start to hear that thud even more. Mm -hmm. It's more prevalent, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you, do you sense that your swing is synchronizing better with the core and your hand it is, it is right mm -hmm. okay so let's hit let's do this a little bit more and then we're going to go to the yellow ball You see how you can really go after it though? Yeah, yeah. You can go after it. It's going to stay like right on around the service line unless you just go high. You don't want to go high. Because if you're hitting this ball high, where's your racket going after the two? It's going up. You want to go two and through, right? So I describe it like this. If you hit two the ball and the ball leaves your racket, you go toward, toward the ball, out, out through. Like that, so it's it's that Vic Braden used to always say when I when I used to be with him in my early years of coaching, he'd say two clicks. He'd go here one and there two, so it's one two and then it's the finish. It doesn't at that point the ball's gone, so it's one two and then it could be like Rafa, you know, bull whip finish. It could be 
horizontal or elevated, you know, even, you know, underneath and you know, inverted, things like that. So around the shoulder. There you go. Again. Go. There you go. Again. Go. Right. So in review, we have the 190. Right, right here in the middle is the 150. And you have the 120. And then I believe you have the 90 or 80. I could ask Bill about that. But anyway, these three, I, I have, these are my arsenal of coaching now. Like I, I have literally, I got these a little while ago from Bill. We were down in Florida speaking at a conference. But I've fallen in love with these foam balls. And, and all my players have too. My young players just love it. And we even play some games like short court service line because I have a few of these and we'll play it. And they, the, even the, the beginner intermediates are learning how to hit with the core and drive the ball, right? Um, and they love this. But this is it. This is the, the progression, the excellent foam ball. So now, after after we've gone through the yellow the foam balls, you're going you're to strike the yellow ball. Now, so again, the objective is is to time your hand with your core at the point of contact, and then nice big finish. Make your hand go fast at contact. Are you ready? Just go straight into the ad cord, in, inside ad cord. Straight ahead, yeah. Ready? Go. Oh. Come here. Y'all didn't see her face because the camera was behind her, but this is what she did. She hit the first ball and she goes, ooh, like that. Like, what was that? That was like, I had some power. I felt like if I had some power and speed on it. Right. So, you, so fe you, you felt like you hit it solid. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be the response of like 99.9% .9 of people that do this. If you, if you carry them through the progression and they understand what they're trying to do, time the core with the hand. So let's hit some more because it's going to get better. Okay. Ready? Big finish. Now, don't come to the ball. Let the ball come to you. You just turn into it. Right? So turn, go. Good, good finish. <laughs> she made that face again. Tell, tell, tell. That surprisingly feels really good. <laughs> I didn't think it would make that big of a Okay, good. So that's what we were going for. So okay. you didn't think that would actually make that big of a difference. Yeah. Right. And, and when you think about hitting a phone ball, most people think, oh, what's the big deal? It's a big deal. That, that feels like a big deal. It, it is a big deal. Okay, so let's keep going. Because it's going to get better. The better you time it, let your hand go fast this time. Just let it go. Ready? Let your hand go fast. Go. There you go. Again, go fast. <clears throat> These are just standard step down. Okay, ready? Go. Ooh, I heard that sound. Now, okay, so you're moving kind of into the ball. Like, you're almost running to the ball. If you can, let me see your left hand out here. Okay, good. So you're here. You're still working on this, but try to keep both hands on this side of your body. If you can reach out with this hand and catch the ball, you're obviously you're too close. So you, that's why the hand needs to be over here and not necessarily in front of you. I know you learned it's kind of old school. We're trying to go to new school. So here, here. All right. So when you go here, then you're gonna you're gonna be able to space the ball better, and your contact is gonna be better as a result. Okay. Here we go. Ready? So turn. Now go. Ooh. Let it rip. There you go. I like that one. So see how you're kind of you're, you're you're stopping the finish here, right? 
if you can stop the finish here, that means you're already slowing down here. So if, if you, you're slowing down right here, if you can stop the finish here. So that's why you want the finish to be here. Wrap that finish around your shoulders. Wrap it all the way around. There you go. Ready? Go. Wrap it. There. That was it. Okay. Let it come to you. Wrap the finish. Good. Make your hand go faster. Go. There it is. Watch your space. You see you stopped your finish? It, yes, and it doesn't go as fast. Okay. Your ball speed will slow down. Make wrap that finish last four. Go. Wrap it. There you go. No, finish strong. Finish balanced. Okay, ready to go. Wrap it. There you go. Wrap it. Alright, that's it. Okay, now we're gonna move a little bit. Okay, Allison, now we're gonna move to your backhand. So the same thing, line your hands up with your cord and then just let it rip. Good finish, and let's get that racket all the way back around your shoulders and on the back for your finish. Ready? Here we go. All, wrap it all the way around. Joker, but stop. Okay, good. So try to get that finish where it's elbows up. Here you go. Not this elbow, this elbow. And wrap that finish there, right? Yeah, so the, the left shoulder kind of points to your heart and elbow as well. Ready? Here we go. And wrap it. Good. Again. The, the other one, the one before that one was a little bit more solid. See how you kind of miss hit that one? Yeah, okay, here we go. Go. Can you turn with the tip of the racket off a little bit more? Turn with the tip off. Now go. There you go. Wrap that finish. That's it. Tip up and turn. Good. And, and again, you're kind of scooting into the ball. Just kind of be patient. Let the ball come into your racket a little bit. Because these are just hand-fed balls, right? Tip up. Yeah, you see how you pulled your core back? Yeah, because you went here and then you pulled your core back away from the ball. You want to here, almost like from the up, upper body, kind of stand up straight. Lower body is, has some knee flex. Hip, hip drop, hip drop the hips. Come on around. Yeah, yeah, rip it. There you go. Line the hands up. Okay, see how you're pulling back? Don't pull that out. You're, you're pulling the core back. Stand right there. Get the, get the belly button and your core pointing to the target. Go. Yeah, there you go. Wrap the finish. Go. You're almost like a, you're going to pull. Yeah, don't pull back. Hit through it. Go after it. There you go. That's it. Two and through. Through. Oh, that one. That one. That one's it. Can get two through. Oh, there's that sound. Oh, there's the sound. Okay, tip up a little bit more. Tip up and you turn. Now go. Sorry, bad bounce. Come back over. Tip up and go rip it. Come on. Tip up, rip it. Okay. All right, so how did how did it feel when you started to strike it clean with your back? Yeah. I heard that sound. Heard that sound. And that's, that's what you're trying to hear, that clean cracking of a whip or gunshot sound. I didn't realize that it was... Yeah, you're pulling back. So you're dissing. You're, the core was coming back off the ball. So all your... Your core energy was coming back yeah. while the racket was the hand was trying to go forward and the distribution of power was was split. Yeah. So, you're, yeah. so you got it, yeah, you felt it there as you started to like connect everything. Right. right? And the purpose of this is to hit more through the ball. Right. Now, do you notice that top spin, like you hit the ball kind of flat already, but I I've, I've noticed with some of with my players that even hit big heavy top spin ball. They're hitting through the ball and they're maintaining their top spin. Like their top spin is still high. Obviously, it's not as high as if you roll it, but it's still high. And consider, and all things considered, that they're trying to drive the ball. With foam balls and then going to the yellow ball, you're going to experience as a player tremendous transformation. Right? What did you experience today 
with regards to transforming how you feel like you're striking the ball. It feels a lot cleaner. It feels like a pretty, it feels like I'm hitting, or it sounds like I'm hitting it harder. It looks like I'm hitting harder, but yes. it doesn't feel like I'm hitting it. Okay, so I'm that's it. So now, now I know as, as your coach that you're hitting the ball more efficiently. You're striking the ball, playing the ball more efficiently because the ball is going faster. Speed, ball speed is high, okay, or higher. The sound of the ball is more of a cracking sound. It's, I like that sound. Right, and it's a good sound. It's yeah. so fun to, to hear that. And you're, you, you said you're using, feel like you're using less energy. That's because you're starting to absorb the impact with more of your core muscles, right? You've got a lot of your core and there's just not, you know, more muscles than in your arm, right? Or your shoulder. So you're absorbing the impact, and that's why it doesn't feel like you're hitting it hard, but you can see the results. Like the ball's bouncing, it's penetrating through the back door or the baseline of the court, and it's getting into that back fence quickly. And your opponent's going to feel it instead of you feeling it in the arm. And that's what you want to be. Take your level to from good to great. All right, now all we've got to do this point now that we've worked out that a little bit we're going to put it in the context of our return and r1 and then serve and s1 because we need to take the content the how you hit the ball or what stroke are you hitting and how you hit it and we've got to put that content in context of why are you, why do you want to hit the ball better okay when and where right so how do I take this cleaner struck forehand and how do I use it tactically to win more matches? Because in all honesty, that's why you want to get better on the practice score is so you can win more. Okay? And that's what we're about here at the Art of Co Art of Winning and Transforming the Practice Score. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation video on the foam balls and how to transform and crack your forehead and back end.